Hi guys and welcome to today's video. Today I'm going to go through 10 tips and tricks when using HitFilm for Express. So the first trick I have is presets. If I just uncheck these, um, then if we go back into our effects tab, we can see we've got a whole bunch of uh, folders here and at the very bottom is presets. If we open up, we've got 2D effects, 3D effects and film looks. This is something I did myself. So presets are pretty much an effect that you can drag onto your video that contain multiple effects or one effect that's been tweaked. So for example, if I get vignette 1080p, it'll drag on the vignette effect which has been customized to fit 1920 by 1080p pixels. Or, or we can go down to our film looks and get a film look such as purple push. Um, and this will apply a number of effects onto our video. Um, which will all give it a certain film look. And this way you don't have to go and tweak things yourself, you can just go straight down to your presets and quickly drag on things you need. And this is really helpful and a really easy way to get things done in HitFilm. Now you can also add your own presets. So as you can see here I've got my own custom grade, just did it in about two seconds, um, not very special at all. But as you can see I've got two effects here, and all I need to do to create my own grade is I need to click on these, um, and I can select all of the ones that I want to be in the preset so I can shift or command select or control select on a PC and just right click and select create preset now you just need to type in what, what you want to be so flower gray for example and put it under say film looks and just press save and now under film looks you've got the flower grade preset and if I just delete these I can just drag the flower grade preset onto my video and it's just the same things. And now we can go ahead and even tweak it even further. One thing I should mention is Inkscape's Digital Preset Marketplace. If you just Google uh, HitFilm Preset Marketplace, then one of the first results will be Inkscape's Digital Presets Marketplace. And this is a really cool site um, with which HitFilm users can go ahead and download um, whatever sort of presets they like. There are a whole bunch here, they tell you which versions um, they're compatible with, um, and there are some really, really cool presets here that you can download. Um, so go check it out, and you can also upload your own presets. So definitely go check it out, and um, this is a really good way to get cool free HitFilm presets. So now we're going to move on to a bit of a more basic, but just as useful, uh, tip. So what you can do is if we just zoom into our timeline here, we can see that each of these is now a frame. Um, but if we don't want to zoom all the way into our timeline and go frame by frame, what we can do is use the full stop and comma keys on our keyboard to jump forward one frame or to jump backwards one frame. And this is really useful when you're doing visual effects or doing some sort of compositing in which you want the timing to be really spot on. So you can just use the comma and full stop keys to go one frame forward and see um, what's happening frame by frame. Now we're in a composite shot, and that's because we're going to talk about keyframing. If you already know what keyframing is good, because I'm not going to go over it, watch this video. Now we're going to talk a bit about interpolation, which is a bit more complex, but it's very useful. As you can see, when we select a keyframe, we can choose interpolation. And interpolation is pretty much um, how it changes between these keyframes. So for example, constant will just move it from this keyframe to the next keyframe to the next keyframe, like so, pretty smoothly. However, we can change the interpolation, so if we make this smooth, for example, it'll smoothly go here, smoothly go there. And that's really nice. We can also choose all sorts of different things. If you're adjusting the position, you also have manual bezier. So if I turn this into manual bezier, I can actually change the path that it takes. If we go into our value graph right here, we can even further uh, change the position of our keyframes and all of its interpolation, which is really, really cool. Now my fourth tip is when you're motion tracking, don't just use a single point, try to use a double point. And the reason for this is double points will remove error and it will allow you to also track rotation and scale options. Um, and that's really, really useful. You'll get so much of a better track if you use two points rather than one. My fifth tip also has to do with motion tracking, and that's when you, after you've motion tracked your whole video, make sure that you don't just select the layer to transform to, you select a new point layer, and then you make sure that 
the layer is that point. And then you can parent every layer that you want to move around with the point to that point. And that way you can adjust position um, relative to the point and it's much more easier to do multiple objects um, tracked to that one point. Next I'm going to talk about 3D effects. One of the really cool things about HitFilm is that you have some really cool 3D effects. Um, which are much better than using stock footage in some regards uh, because you can rotate them around in th full 3D. So a lot of these effects aren't exactly as realistic as real fires or real clouds or whatever, but the great thing about them is that you can rotate them um, in full 3D. And this becomes really useful um, if you have different camera angles and all that sort of thing um, and you want to change the position and rotation of all of your particles in 3D. Now keyframing isn't just in the composite shot, although you can do so much more in a composite shot than you can do in the editor, there's still keyframing in the editor, but you can only keyframe opacity and audio. However, this is really cool. If we go into our transform here, we can see that we can keyframe the opacity. If we set a keyframe to be 100% here and 0% here, we can see that the opacity slowly goes down and we can even adjust the keyframes like so. Um, now we can see that it sort of fades out. And we can do the same thing with the audio properties right here. My eighth tip is to change your workspace. So if we go to view workspace on a Mac or on Windows, there's a grid like button right next to the undo and redo buttons. Um, you can change your workspace. Um, and a workspace is pretty much the whole layout of HitFilm. So you can choose ones such as all panels, which show everything, um, to ones that are suited better to editing with a big trimmer. Um, or something that's suited to compositing with no trimmer but a really large uh, viewer and layer. You can also move around uh, windows like so, um, and move around your editor into all sorts of different places, uh, make sure the editor's here or something, and you can really customize your own workspace. And then you can go view and save your own workspace as well, just like you can with presets really. My ninth tip is to go into preferences. So if we go hit from 4 Express and preferences, then we'll come up with loads of tabs where we can change loads of things about preferences, such as our plane and slash image default duration, as well as our composite shot default duration, timeline, etc, etc. You can change all sorts of things, such as warning, cache, proxy, all these things. Now my tenth tip is actually a really important one, and that's to go through all of these shortcuts. Shortcuts really make your editing workflow much easier. If you learn all of these shortcuts, then you'll become much quicker when editing with this program. Alternatively, for loads of these uh, different shortcuts, you can actually change um, exactly what shortcut you want. So for example, if I want to move position down by 10 pixels, I want to change that, just redo it, and say U, and now when I press U, it'll move it down by 10 pixels. So those are all the tips in HitFilm 4 Express. So thank you guys for watching this video. Um, I hope this helped you. I hope you now use these tips. I hope you learn something um, from these tips that I've given you today. Um, and yeah, thank you for watching this video. I will see you guys next time. Stay shiny. Bye.